Bowling Green has Ravion Hargrove, a freshman and another freshman, one of two Georgians on the roster. On the near side is Cartersville, Georgia's Rico Fry. Here's the kick from Davis, and this will be Ravion Hargrove, and he will take a knee. So the Falcons will start first and 10 at their 25-yard line, and James Bates is forward, keys to the game. All right, start with those guys from Bowling Green in the ground game, and I'm not just talking about that run game, which definitely needs to improve. They ran well against Oregon, but haven't since then. They've got to get guys down on the ground, going back to making those tackles, dropping them, and for Georgia Tech, simply win. Yeah, win will help to, to cure all those ills, but simplify things. Get back to the basics. Paul Johnson said offensively, We've got four plays in. There are different, a bunch of different ways to get to them, but just four plays, and the receivers aren't going to have a lot of different options. Just go run and play football and hold on to it. Defensively, let's see how they start. Deggie wants to throw on first down inside, and this is Stephen Miller, or Scott Miller, and he'll have 12 yards for a first down to the 37. So a quick throw to Miller, his 22nd catch of the year. Well, quickly they go to him, and there's a lot of a lot of this quick draw game you'll see from Bowling Green. It's you don't really know what to call it. There's so much air raid in the background of this coaching staff, but it isn't necessarily the air raid of throw short and run long. Taking a shot to the far side and offline for Quentin Morris on Daigie's second throw of the afternoon. Well, Jarrett Daigie comes to the quarterback in game, James. Almost by genetics. His older brother, one of the better players in the Big 12 at Texas Tech, Seth Dagan. Yes, older brother on this staff, the wide receiver coach, special teams coach. That's Claire moving out of the backfield into the wide side. Now back across the middle. Miller another catch and hit right away. Six-yard throw there, and it looked like that Tariq Carpenter, one of the Georgia Tech tackle leaders at safety, made the play. So third down now for a Bowling Green team that's under 34% on the year. Nice solid play there by Carpenter not to, to bite for that pump fake, stay home, close in and make the tackle. Here's a chance to get off the field now. Faked it to Claire. Deggie wants to keep it, and boy, got hit and hit hard by Jalen Johnson, shy of the first down by about a yard and a half. Well, that's a, that, that tough Texas kid, Daigie and company. I mean, those, those West Texas kids are all pretty tough. He's going to mix it up in there, and that's the only chance he had to get in the first down. Quarterback didn't give himself up, so the defender can come up and, and stuff it. And here they're lining up on fourth down, looking like they're going for it. Bowling Green brings in two H-backs or tight ends. They're both former defensive players. And they're on that wing to the right. Around the corner, this is Morris, and he will have the first down on the sweep across midfield. So big 6'4", Quentin Morris gets the first down. Interesting, he's not your typical jet sweep type of guy, but why not have a big body if you might need a couple extra? Boy, that's a nice job blocking a couple guys on the perimeter. One of them was the uh, tight end, Brian Sanders to seal the edge. Big pickup on the opening drive. Deggie inside, and this is Miller going to work. Inside the 35, and another Bowling Green. First down to the Georgia Tech 32 already on Scott Miller's third catch of this opening drive. 21 is the go-to guy. Gone to him first play of the game, and here this time for a nice pickup and a fresh set of downs. And here's that tempo again. This is a defense that struggled with the tempo this year. Claire will get a yard after his first carry of the afternoon. So Bowling Green getting a lot of early mileage, James, out of that five to nine yard throwing game that Jared Daigie had. Without a doubt. And, and a lot of the base of those air raid offenses will throw short and run long. The ball is caught and the catch made out on the perimeter. That's R.B. Marlowe the third hauling it in. And he will be close to another first down. Here's a nice look at it. Nicely thrown football. And Marlowe knowing he's going to get hit, doing an excellent job of hanging on to it. Substitution on offense, so the Tech guys will get a chance to match that. Daigie and company over the ball again on a third and short. Saw Daigie clap his hands. Georgia Tech held their spot there. 
now the Jackets see something in defensive coordinator Nate Woody on the near side signaling something back to his unit. Here's the throw, and that's Derek Pudavong, the big 6'5 senior from Columbus, Ohio, and his first catch, six-yard throw, and another first down. Well, and here you see an example. We showed you off the top of the show the pit game. There were a couple drops. You know, it's it's a, a Georgia Tech quarterback that's trying to find a rhythm, trying to get into a groove. The same can be said for the guys from Bowling Green. Receivers holding on to these footballs. These haven't been easy catches. Here's a throw backside, and that is Morris. Another catch on first down for a yard or so is Bowling Green. And the Falcons on their opening drive have moved into the CPI security red zone here with just better than four minutes gone in the first period and the 11th play of the drive. They've been, this will be their 12th red zone possession of the year, James. They've got nine touchdowns so far. Rico Fry, the freshman, in the backfield with Dagey. And this is Marlowe, and he got hit right away, and that's David Curry. Or I beg your pardon, Bryson Denley, not RB Marlowe. So Denley, the redshirt sophomore from Texas, Hit right away by David Curry. Third down here. Nice job by Curry. Light it up, go make that tackle. Aggressive tackling, both these coordinators preach it. They've got to take it out on the field and make it happen. Curry does it right there to bring up another third down. Five minutes off the clock, James. This is their 12th play of the drive. It, you know, it kind of reminds you of the opening drive for Georgia Tech last week yep. against Clemson. An eight minute drive. and. All for not fumbling it away. That's Denley in motion. He'll get the handoff on the sweep, trying to get to the perimeter, and Georgia Tech rallies. Carpenter, the safety polished him off after Johnson got to him initially. And so the Jackets hold the Falcons here. Well, there's a big time hold going on right there for a little while. A good job by Tariq to fight his way out of it. Go make the play, bringing the load. Excellent job. Stretching that football. Take it all the way to the sidelines. A nice opening drive, but they're going to force him to a field goal try here. Here is Nate Needham, a redshirt sophomore. He's hit two of three field goal tries this year, and this is 29 yards, and the kick is good. So Bowling Green takes the opening possession. Marches into double figures of plays. Lost the MAC opener. Right. Against Miami of Ohio. Coaches said they had an outstanding week of practice right back at it. And it certainly shows right there. I mean, an impressive opening drive. They convert midfield on a fourth down and short. Had to settle for three. Keep an eye on Wanye Thomas. He's already into the top 10 in kickoff return yardage in the ACC, and he'll play from the five. Freshman at the 15, 20, 25. Thomas 30, and 31 yard line goes the young man from Niceville, Florida. 26-yard return for Wanye Thomas, and, uh, just shy of one of his better returns of the year. Over in the panhandle, but not the kind of panhandle these Texans know about. The Florida panhandle in Niceville. A lot of good athletes have come out of there over the years, and that'll give you a nice spark. Good field position to start at the 31 for Taquan Marshall in this offense. Well, you mentioned at the top now, Bowling Green is 129th nationally at 333.5. Yards per game allowed rushing, and Marshall's going to throw on the first snap for Jalen Camp, who makes the catch in territory at the Falcon 37-yard line ahead of free safety Jerry McBride. How about it? Knowing that that run's coming, you know, <laughs> work on it all week, all week, all week. What do you get right out the gate? Not only a pass, but a beautifully thrown pass to camp by Taquan Marshall. Marshall may not be a world beater when it comes to throwing the football, but he can absolutely get it done, especially in a system like this when you got him on their heels with the run game. 35-yard play, Jordan Mason on the dive, and he'll get a couple of yards to the 33. Got a look inside at Josh Crossland on the tackle. And here is our Hardy star to watch. And this is Clinton Lynch, who's right on the cusp of history today. The first Georgia Tech player ever to have 1,000 career yards re receiving and rushing. It's never been done in the better than 125 years. Marshall on the option keeper to the far side. And he will fall down shy of the 26. It might be enough for the first down as Marcus Milton the nickelback was in coverage for the Falcons. Well, you get a sense pushing it wide, pushing it wide. We talked to Carl Pellini, the defensive coordinator of Bowling Green, on the phone this week. And 
over and over. He mentioned about teaching his kids all week to push it wide. And it's not all the time as we talk about with this triple option that, that teams will see it a couple weeks later, we'll see it again. It's brand new for a lot of people. Carl Pellini, he's coached against it just has been a while. Marshall on the pitch, Cersei, little dodge and dart. And inside the 20 goes Quay Cersei. Clint Stevens, redshirt senior corner, shoved him out of bounds after an eight-yard run. And there's Paul Johnson. Nathan Cottrell will bring the play. <laughs> There's no chart on this bench <laughs> for the 11th year head coach of the Jackets, who's got 76 wins here in Atlanta, 183 in his career. That now spans 22 seasons as a head coach. Second and short in a tight formation. Straight ahead, and this is Mason. And he tried to get to the right side. And it'll be third and short, it looks like. Interesting there. You saw right before the snap a couple major shifts, bodies moving around, just trying to throw that offensive line, throw their, their, their plan of attack, their blocking scheme. Well, they had an extra tackle in that lineup and mm -hmm. ran the other way from the extra tackle to the short side, if you will. You see that a lot from offenses. You see a lot of shifts from defenses, but not... Not so extreme as you did these last couple plays. Here's Mason bouncing inside. First and goal, Georgia Tech on the run by Jordan Mason. Brandon Harris, the leading tackler for the Falcons on the stop. Well, having their way up front, look at the, the holes. Usually, usually it's bodies going down to the ground. That time it was just Georgia Tech, the offensive line. Just blowing off the ball and opening opening up a, a hole a little bit bigger than you're used to around here. Cersei in motion, they'll hand it to Mason. Touchdown. Second rushing score of the year for Jordan Mason. And Georgia Tech answers the Bowling Green field goal with a touchdown, James. Well, yeah, just like butter, and just as advertised. Opening drive, Georgia Tech. Everything is pretty clean, moving forward on every snap and right down into the end zone. And if you're a Tech fan, that's the kind of precision and the cleanliness you want to see from Euro all day long. Get back on track. And that is Wesley Wells adding the point after. He's the freshman from Dahlonega who won the place kicking job. Jordan Mason, second rushing score of the year. Jackets with a four point lead at home. 12 for Jordan Mason's second rushing score of the year, James. And I think his first one came when we were here for Alcorn State to start the year. So I want to bring us around a little bit more. Mason might want us to hang out a while. <laughs> Kick by Davis, and there will be no return for Ravion Hargrove. So second straight possession for Jarrett Dagey, and the Bowling Green offense will start from its 25. Of course, a field goal on the opening drive for Mike Jinx's club, who's here after losing to Miami at home last week. Bowling Green is 3-7 and seven all time against the Atlantic Coast Conference. The last time, James, they saw an ACC team was the Little Caesars Bowl in Detroit against James Conner and the Pittsburgh Panthers. It's a pizza. <laughs> That's right. Mike Illich. Uh-huh. Owner of the Red Wings from Detroit Drive. So here is Jarrett Dagey, 6'3", 205-pound sophomore from Lubbock. Their first of the half. Bowling Green wants a timeout as they got to the line. And I think we're going to take it with them. We certainly will Wake Forest after the loss to Notre Dame. Tries to get it fixed against Rice coming up at 3.30 today. Greg Dortch, James. He's worth staying mm. around for that one. Heck, yeah. Seeing if the Deeks can get it back on track. They get to the thick of this conference slate here. You know, interesting timeout, but you got to be careful. Make sure you're all on the same page. And right on the same page there, Wes, that defense for Georgia Tech. Henri St. Amour right into the backfield to hit Andrew Clare. Well, in a hurry. We, we talked about the struggles defensively for Bowling Green against the run. They haven't really been all that much better running the football showing you right there and you know this is an important 
every snap, just like you always talk about holding serve when the Georgia Tech team's playing. It's get a sense that Georgia Tech's going to be tough to stop today. Daigie flush throws, and that's Morris, another catch, and he'll be right around the mark for the first and should have it. In fact, his progress marked to the 36, and so Quentin Morris, another catch, 14-yard play. And let's check with Rebecca. And guys, Coach Jinx really wanted his quarterback to get off to a fast start this afternoon. He said, Daigie, when he's confident, we feel like we can play with anybody. And last week, he started slow for the first time this season. Coach Jinx said that really affected the team. And you see, too, Rebecca, he he's, throws a pretty ball and a very accurate passer as well. There's a throw to the backside, Wayne Prather. Jordan Wayne Prather is a junior from Paducah out of Antelope Community College who hauls that in. Four-yard catch. They got a bucket full of ball catchers, James. It's got to take you back to your playing days for Spurrier, doesn't it? All the receivers and all the routes. and They really do. <laughs> Yeah, but back in those days, it would have been the, the Kentucky crew, like Tim Couch's guys, all those, you know, the, the, yeah. when, you, when you talk air raid, the Hal Mummy days. That's it. Now Daigie in trouble, out of the pocket, going to flip it into the Georgia Tech bench and over the head of R.B. Marlowe. Desmond Branch, who had a deflected interception off a helmet last week against Clemson, and Kyle Serge Henderson forced the pocket on Seth or Jared Daigie. A great job to continue that push by Branch. He, he loses contain a little bit. It's, he might have, might have even been pulled down underneath, but, but he was the one with the bull rush that got the pressure there initially to flush Daigie. And then that second wave comes. So here's another big third down and medium. This defense needs to make a big play here, get off the field. Daigie across the middle, broken up. And knocked away by Trey Swilling. Away by three, well, Nate Woody's defense gets a stop there, James. How many times do you hear me up here talk to these, these quarterbacks, know where the sticks are? Where are they trying to get? Where are they trying to break those routes off? Well, Swilling knew. That's an excellent job by Swilling. Good job coaching by Nate Woody and his staff. Get off the football field. Put that ball back in your offense's hands and let them get back to having some fun like they did on the opening drive. Brad Stewart will wait on the punt here of Grant Tenerman. Wobbly kick towards Stewart. He will signal for it and make the fair catch just inside the 25-yard line. It's a 36-yard punt by the sophomore gentleman. Time for this week's AFLAC trivia question. Giving this to you early. So you can Google it. AFLAC! Which Bowling Green player's dad had a pick six against Georgia Tech in 1979? This is the first ever meeting between Georgia Tech and Bowling Green. We said earlier, Georgia Tech's first ever meeting with a Mac school, and that's very surprising in my opinion, given the 120-some-odd year history of Georgia Tech. And certainly the proud tradition of the Mac, too, James. I didn't see this. I'm sure that dad is really pleased with that off-flag trivia question. Thanks for reminding me. It's going to ring pretty clear. Here's Marshall on the pitch, and this is Cersei. Quay Cersei to the 45. Good job, Torian Hampton the stop. Sorry, Wes, downfield. And those big plays happen for the Yellow Jackets because everybody down the field is doing their job. Bodies on the ground, continuing to block way down the field. Jalen Camp, who had the big catch earlier, hustling down and pushing his guy back. A nice job, get it up near midfield on the first play. Jerry Howard's coming at the B-back spot, first and 10, and this is Howard, the sophomore with his first carry of the day. Marcus Milton, the corner, crashes down to make the stop, Rebecca. Guys, you know, this week at practice, Coach Johnson made it a priority to spend a lot more time than usual with the quarterbacks, just working on those basics, re-emphasizing things like pitch relationship. Daquan Marshall told me it was really helpful because sometimes when you're in, a, you're in a rut, you need to just remember what to do and you need a reminder to get back on track. Second down, here's Marshall again. This is the pitch, Nathan Cottrell. Oh, took a good lick there. Nice play, and that's Monte Gregory from the corner spot to make uh, third down. All right, how about the Aflac trivia question? What Bowling Green player's dad had a 39-yard interception return against Georgia Tech in 1979, and it's Kyle Jr., whose dad was a 13-year pro out of Alabama, EJ Jr. Oh. All right. Here's Marshall, and he will have it. Broke the plane. 
Inside the 45, and Kyle Jr. right on cue. Nicely done, Kyle. Makes the tackle. He had an older brother, EJ the third, that played briefly at Tennessee State, James. But Kyle Jr.'s dad, one of the biggest and baddest of the Crimson Tide back in the late 70s for Paul Bear Bryant. And Kyle comes to Bowling Green from Middletown, Ohio. Nice play right there. Here's Marshall looking to throw. Going to tee it up for Jalen Camp, who makes the catch inside the 10. Right over the top of Monte Gregory goes the throw from Taquan Marshall. Yesterday, Paul Johnson said, that, hey, Jalen Camp, he can clean the entire weight room. He's so strong. He's so big out there. Use that body. Use your body. Be physical. Go up for the ball and own it. It's exactly what he does here on the end of a nicely thrown Marshall football. There's some hand fighting going on. It was, it was outstanding coverage, but he slaps those wrists off, and he uses that strength. Taking it from the practice field out to the game field. Here's Jerry Howard banging away on first and goal. Howard throws the ball. Brought down by Marcus Hilton. And Paul Johnson. He'll send Clinton Lynch with the play. Enjoyed our visit yesterday with Coach Johnson James. It doesn't take long to get the full scope of football when you visit with the native of Newland in western North Carolina. Well, and usually it takes a lot longer when you go elsewhere because you don't talk to an offensive coordinator because he's the offensive coordinator. But it, uh, we spent some extra time in there with Coach Johnson. Yep. It was fun. Here's Marshall on the keeper. Oh, lost his helmet. It. Yep. The whistles will blow. And now here's Tobias Oliver coming into the ball game because Marshall will have to come out for a snap. Colby Coleman, the middle linebacker, was the first of the Falcons to get there. And two guys, actually, because... Also, Parker Braun lost his helmet, so that means that Brad Morgan will come in, and here is Tobias Oliver, who on the year has three rushing scores. My goodness, look at the helmets going everywhere. It's like dumb and dumber. We got no food, we got no jobs, our pets' heads are falling off. <laughs> so Tobias Oliver has played some snaps now. It's not like it's a guy coming. Fresh off the bench, hasn't taken many snaps this year. Third goal, Oliver tried to get there on the follow, fights his way. And gets to the one. Brandon Harris, the linebacker, was there. And there's no doubt what Georgia yeah. Tech's doing here. Well, especially with the adventures there the with the field goal units. Yep. It was nice, if you're a Tech fan, to see just the extra point go through. It's then been that much of an adventure. And they may not have to snap this. If so, it'll be the final play of the quarter. Marshall under center, fourth and goal, and he will fall into the end zone on the final play of the period. Taquan Marshall, sixth rushing scorer of the year. Well, just enough after the defense stiffened there when they got down near the goal line, and you know, I think what's going on over there is, is there's a little bit with Mike Jinks wondering, did I hear a whistle? It looked like time ran out. And they may even go take a look at it and make sure they got that playoff. So I'm sure the referee is Stuart Mullins. The ruling on the previous play of a touchdown is under further review. And I think you're right, James. I think this is not about whether he got in. This is about the timing. Exactly. And Marshall broke the plane. He's in. The ball has crossed the white or touched the white, which then would qualify as a touchdown. I think it might be a timing yeah. issue. Well, it, it, and if and if that's on, if that's keyed up right there, it's it was snapped. It's. I don't think this has. I could be wrong here, James, but I think you're on it here with the timing. Yeah. Well, I actually thought I heard a whistle. And I think Paul Johnson's asking, "Is this about the touchdown?" Down in front of the Georgia Tech bench. So Stuart Mullins, the referee here. And 
pretty quick situation. Here we go. After review, the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. James, we're now being told they were looking at whether or not he was in. Not a timing okay. issue. Okay. So here is uh, Wesley Wells, who, by the way, just completed his first ever collegiate kick on the previous extra point. Bowling Green is offside, didn't bother Wells. He punched it right through. Well, Georgia Tech's converted two red zone chances in two possessions, and you see the total number and good balance, James. 75 rushing, 70 passing from Taquan Marshall in this uh, opening quarter of play, and the Jackets have a 14-3 lead as we go to the second quarter of action here at Grand Field at Bobby Dodd State. I think you're going to continue to have some of that balance because Bowling Green's had such a tough time shutting down this rushing attack. So you got to bring extra guys in to help and just opens up some opportunities and taking advantage of those opportunities to Quan Marshall. He's done a fantastic job of throwing the football. Away. Sean Davis's kick will be toward the Radiant Hargrove and there will be no return. And Rebecca Capel standing downstairs when our Sonovas greatness made here. That's right, you guys. I am down here with former Georgia Tech quarterback Eddie McShann. And Eddie, he was the honorary captain today, but the first African-American to receive a scholarship to play here at Georgia Tech, the first African-American to be a starting player here. Looking back, Eddie, how groundbreaking was that for you and for everyone else who followed in your footsteps? Well, I think it was more groundbreaking for the fans and other players behind me because it, it seems like since high school, I was always number one. A guy asked me, how did I come up with that? And I thought, well, a player ahead of me in high school was All-American quarterback, Jackie Eckdahl. He wore number five. So I thought, well, if I wear a single number, maybe I'll be an All-American too. And I ended up being one. So uh, when I got here, it continued. So yeah, yeah. So I had, a, I know. had a great time here. And I know back in the day, late 60s, early 70s, there were not that many African-American quarterbacks in general. That was pretty uh, pretty different for fans to see, wasn't it? Well, Atlanta especially, uh, there had been a few around the nation. Uh, one was at USC that played Alabama, Jimmy Jones. And uh, I think there was another one, uh, uh, I think Kentucky, yeah. But you're right, it, it was a rare deal, but from my neighborhood coming from Florida, uh, you know, we always had black quarterbacks. You know, everywhere I went, there were black quarterbacks. Well, quite an honor to meet you and enjoy your day here this afternoon. I will, thanks for the interview. Guys, back up to you. Thanks, Rebecca, and thanks to Eddie for the visit from Gainesville, Florida to downtown Atlanta as a quarterback at Georgia Tech was Eddie McShannon out of the backfield. Here's R.B. Marlowe from Lakeland, Florida, by the way, picking up a first down for the Falcons and went to GHS as well. There is Bryson Denley, arguably the fastest Bryson Falcon on the roster, the ball. picking up about five or six on first down. Great to have Eddie with us in our Sonovas Greatness Made Here segment this week. Well, and how about this Bowling Green offense? They're not done coming right back out here. You saw during the interview the, the drop a beautifully thrown football by Daigie. It could have gone all the way for a touchdown. Uh, Papez, the receiver dropping the football, then they convert on third down. 
A nice gain on first to make it second and five. Here's Daigie again, wants to throw from the pocket. Georgia Tech trying to get there. Daigie gets out on the perimeter. Curry bearing down, and he will throw short. And another catch, I believe that's uh, was not Scott Miller. That's Justin Saw Miller, who started his college career over at Cincinnati, bailing him out. Well, his brother Seth saying, hey, you're going to get hit. It's part of the job. Stay in there. Stay in there. He has to bail at this point. He's still going to take a little pop. His receiver does as well. Didn't get the first that time, but he does this time. A couple minutes gone here in the second period, James, are pretty important drive for Bowling Green offensively, don't you think? Wes, without a doubt, give those those defenders just a, a chance to get a sip of water. It's, it's just such a grueling effort to try to shut down this option attack where they chip away at you and get you going on the ground. And here, if nothing else, just let them catch their breath. And they're thinking more than that here. They'd like to run down and get their first touchdown of the game. Daigie, this is Miller who dropped it at the 40. Daigie's pass incomplete. Intended for Miller. Just when we started bragging on him there in the first quarter, these receivers coming up with some nice, tough catches. They drop a couple easy ones, a couple that absolutely should have been caught. We want to come into a place like Bobby Dodd Stadium and hang around with Georgia Tech. And that's Scott Miller. That's the go-to guy. That is the senior. Needs to catch that. Here's a quick throw. This is Miller again off the play fake. And he will dive out to what is close to a first down. A Johnny Kerr on the fifth catch of the day by Miller. And very quickly, uh, just a straight ahead play. To, they had awarded the first down, I thought, to Daigie. And they had, yeah. He, I don't think Daigie thought it was a first down. And now it's second down. I think Dakey thought they were yeah. short, and that's why they got to the line and just snuck it. Well, there, and there's an example of, of going too fast. Yeah. You know, sometimes that, that tempo, it, it can can throw defenses off. It can, it can throw yourself off, too. Ten play of the drive. Looking toward the end zone now. And a diving catch, Derek Poudamon. Touchdown, Bowling Green. Dakey's pass complete to number 18, Derek well, he couldn't connect with Popez. It wasn't his fault. Again, throws a dime. I mean, a beautifully thrown football. Poudavong not only has to lay out for it, but he has to rip those hands of the defender off before he does. Watches it all the way in. Nate Woody can only, oh, man, that's not a happy face right there for the defensive coordinator at Georgia Tech. But an impressive drive for Bowling Green. Step back out there and answer. Absolutely. Point after from Needham is good. So Daigie throws his 12th touchdown pass of the year. Throw number two in the MAC coming in uh, into the ball game today in terms of touchdown passes and big drive for the Falcons to close to within four. See that shot up in there with that that shape down low, a little bit of a bowl up top, looked like Zach Thomas from behind almost. <laughs> he did some damage in Lubbock, Texas, on the other side of the ball. <laughs> Kick by Needham. And this is Thomas breaking back. And boy, I'll tell you what, it's not going to be long before Wanye Thomas is standing at the other end. Let's check. Shows up at his older brother's house and raids the pantry. Seth told me he always knows when his little brother has been at his house. I'll tell you, you what. think they got a haircut together this week, Rebecca? Yeah. Look, they both high and tight there. <laughs> well, I will tell you this, you guys. Uh, Seth is expecting his first baby in three weeks. So Jared's Ooh. very excited to be an uncle very, uh. very soon. Clint That's Lynch awesome. not excited about the draw play on the counter and got the counter there and lost about, oh, three yards, two yards for sure. Seth Dagey, James, say what you want. Seth Dagey was one of those guns up guys out in Lubbock now mm -hmm. that could sling it. He knew how to battle the winds of Texas, didn't he? <laughs> oh, yeah, man. Out at Jones AT&T Stadium. That guy knew how to throw it with and against the wind. There's plenty of it. That's the ones out there. Here comes Marshall. He'll keep it on the option. Taquan turns it up. First down to the 41 for Georgia Tech. 15-yard run from Marshall. Jerry McBride, the safety to stop. Well, you got to be consistent. Back-to-back -back place. You can't have guys overrunning, guys getting cut. Marshall taking, taking advantage of it all. 
after you go backwards on the first play, puts his foot in the ground, and a nice job there by Clinton Lynch to get that defender down to the ground. Can't make plays on the ground, and Marshall knows he takes advantage of it. Big pickup for first down. Eight in the box. Marshall handed it straight ahead, and Mason got a step. Nico Lutonen, the redshirt junior from Mentor, Ohio. You see Lutonen there dropping the hammer on Jordan Mason. James, I just noticed, I think Bowling Green had 11 guys within seven yards of the line of scrimmage there. Well, again, and then just like we talked about earlier, that's, that's where you're going to get a, a Georgia Tech team usually isn't that balanced, even more balanced, because they're going to give them those opportunities. Here it is again, going to throw deep. Clinton Lynch is there, caught. Inside the 20. McBride the tackle, but that might have been enough to put Lynch in the 1,000-1,000 club. And it was. Well, how about it? And you mentioned it, partner, all those guys in the box, you got to stop the bleeding somehow. But in doing so, you weaken the opportunity to cover. Also, when you got those ears pinned back, you got to do everything you can to stop that run. It gets everybody in that run defense mode. And you're a step behind Clinton Lynch. And again, a nice job by these receivers of taking care of Taquan Marshall, holding on to that football. Base look, Marshall on the pitch, Nathan Cottrell. Lowers the shoulder, he'll pick up seven or eight here on first down. By the way, the Lynch catch here a moment ago, James, 41 yards. And that takes him into, boy, I'll tell you what, pretty unique territory. The first Georgia Tech player ever with 1,000 yards rushing and receiving in his career. Wow. Pretty good, huh? That's, that's fantastic. <laughs> Congratulations. It's, you know, and, and one thing we, the stat you don't see is that it's a guy who does blocking all the time. Yep. And, and I mean that. I mean, it's – I've really throughout this season getting ready for these games, 22 always jumps out. You know, you watch it take up. Who the heck was that on that one? It's, it's Clinton Lynch. So it's not like, hey, that's not my contract. I'm just here to score touchdowns. <laughs> I don't think it can be in anybody's contract if you play for Paul Johnson. But you know what I'm saying. Yeah, no, you're right. Well, here's Mason now at the B-back spot on first and goal. Base look for the Jackets, who lead by four. Here's Marshall, and boy, Bowling Green really sorted that out nicely. In fact, Kyle Jr. was kind of the pivot guy, and then Bozeman, and you see Salguero as they get some of the linebackers in. Really, when you look at James, you know, a lot of high schools play that 4-2-5 now. It looks like Bowling Green's base, because of the balls being thrown in the back, they're kind of a 4-2-5, yeah. aren't they? But, you know, it's funny that they, they, they've got a good-looking front four where a lot of teams have to have three down line because they don't have too many big bodies. There's Cottrell on the toss. He'll score the touchdown. Nathan Cottrell's second rushing score behind the blocking of Will Bryan out on the perimeter. out there. Let's watch watch Searcy as well. Look at these guys on the edge. Boom. That's Quay. Searcy's going to get down there, going to stay up high. So as not to draw the flag. You know, and, and just like Lynch on the other side, there's always Quay Searcy. And Cottrell is another A-back that'll go and block downfield. Also can turn on the Jets and score. And here is the youngster Wells. This is your right move. Eight plays, 72 yards, 355. Three possessions and three touchdowns for you. Back to Atlanta, 21 to 10. Georgia Tech's latest score is Nathan Cottrell's second touchdown run of the season. And James, here's the thing. The Jackets are throwing it when the defense shows them a certain formation. And we talked about 11 guys within seven yards. Well, in West, I mean, going into this season, Paul Johnson, offensively, he thought he had some. Yeah. And, and you, you know, it's right now, this is an outmatched Bowling Green defense in the first half. But it's when they take care of the football, it shows that they, they can make some big plays. No return for Hargrove. Fourth straight possession bowling. Workspace, any place, find it at your local lows. Andrew Clare, the running back, is Jarrett Deggy. Runs the offense, going to take the deep shot from Marlowe and overthrows him incomplete. And RB Marlowe and Bryson Denley, two of the fastest Falcons on the offensive side of the ball. And that was Marlowe, the 
Young man from Lakeland Christian down in Florida. Spreading it around. Look at that, seven different receivers today for Dayton. Second down. Wants to throw it, now being flushed, and he'll fire it into the bench area incomplete. St. Amour was again pressuring Daigie. Jarrett Daigie, by the way, as he was looking for Scott Miller, became the first true freshman to start at quarterback for Bowling Green since 1982 last year, James. And he hit 64% of his passes, 1,380 yards, and a dozen scores. Now on third to full 10, there's Miller, first down, 40. And midfield is where Scott Miller goes. Boy, he's been dangerous today, especially from the slot, 25 yards. Tariq Carpenter was the closest Georgia Tech defender to him. My goodness, and good protection. They come with a four-man rush, and they don't get there, and everybody's chasing Miller. And keep looking down, he's from Barrington, Illinois. You want him to be from Lubbock, Texas. You want yeah. him to be like a Wes Welker type of guy, like they've had at Texas Tech over the years. I think he almost went to a knee to hand it to Andrew Clare, who got 10 yards in. Very deceptive play. James Daigie caught the ball and was almost kneeling. I don't think the knee hit the ground as he handed it to Clare. Slick ball handling by the Falcon quarterback here. We'll take a look at it. He does go down pretty low. Oh, my goodness. They probably will take a look at it. <laughs> we'll take a break with them here in Atlanta under review at Jarrett Daigie and you see the knee almost James nope and Stuart Mullins and some matrix stuff there yeah so second and short play will stand a little food for thought from Mike Jinks and Bowling Green, though, huh? The way you run the play. It's slick ball handling by Daigie. Yeah. That's, that's bottom line. But Well, and it's, you know, it's, it's a little taste of your own medicine. When you go pass, happy, pass, happy, pass, yeah. happy. Georgia Tech, it's the other way around. But then you can, you can get some big hitters on the ground. Uh-oh. Ball is loose on the snap. Daigie will be sacked. That was Jalen Johnson from Aniata, Alabama, fighting through into the backfield. Nate Woody, that'll cheer him up a little bit. A little bit of help and not able to, so back-to-back -to -back tough ones. This one he's unable to avoid. And just lucky to get the ball back. In that situation when you know they're coming, you gotta be careful in trying to pick it up. You live to play another down and now your third down is third down in forever. Yeah, 17 yard loss by the way. And you had it second down and short. So many different things you could run. Helping them out here. Georgia Tech runs four at them, and here's Morris, but it's offline and out of bounds. Davis pass incomplete. Intended for a point We had Morris. a uh, long talk yesterday it's with Paul down. Johnson about that route, those, those little fade routes, even if it is a back shoulder route, you've got to give your quarterback, you've got to give him a chance. Yeah. And, and, and that comes with where you line up. Four yards, five yards from that sideline. Even if you're, you're the outside receiver, there's nowhere to go, nowhere to throw, nowhere to run that route, and makes it easy on those defensive backs. Here's Grant Timmerman now with under six to go to punt it away in this first half. Not a great punt. And in fact, and there's a flag here. And I think the flag is against Georgia Tech. But the penalty will come post kick of a short punt by Timmerman. Well, this is a Bowling Green team that has been helped out throughout the season by opponents' penalties. Big time, especially that Maryland game. The punt is just 15 yards. And we're going to take a timeout. Well, maybe hold on. Stuart Mullins is. Coming to talk with his side judge today, and that is George Leotis. We'll step aside as they visit. 21-10 after the holding call. 
against Georgia Tech on the penalty here, James, which went against Carpenter. It ends up being about a 29-yard penalty because the ball is spotted at the 14 from the 43 where it would have gone out of bounds. It was a 15-yard punt. The penalty occurred much further down the field. It's 10 yards back of that. Well, and so, Jinx has been happy with the, the kicking game. They lost both a kicker and a punter off of last year's team, but helping out what was a very ugly punt. Base look for Georgia Tech. Toss, and this is Searcy working the edges. And he will fight upfield toward the 24, and that's a gain of almost nine and a half on first down. Marcus Milton, the nickel. James, they're jumping in. We just saw it there a moment ago. BG crawling a guy up on the line at the right side there. Watch this block. Boom, that's Brad Stewart's going to come down and really deliver a big blow and a good job of waiting till those pads get turned so it's not a, a true crackback block. Braun and company up front leading the way as well. And that's got to feel pretty good for this offense. Got those big hitters like that. It's Jerry Howard, the sophomore, straight ahead. Howard plays the ball. You know, it's always fascinating when we draw Georgia Tech in our coverage, James, to ask Paul Johnson, well, what do you, how do you think they'll line up? And invariably it's, well, they either go this way or that way, right? <laughs> well, and, and, and sometimes he'll give us answers like, well, I went back and watched Polini's defense 2012 against Navy. Yeah. Yeah, you know, just because they haven't seen it in a while. And how about that, huh? <laughs> 2012. How's that video catalog working? Here's Marshall, a little counter, and the pitch, and Nathan Cottrell sets sail. Cottrell breaking free, hard running across midfield. With four and a half to go. Well, Georgia Tech fans, isn't this a little bit more fun when you, when you got that momentum going? Look at him firing off up front, Parker Braun. Now watch, on the ground, how many times you hear me say you can't make plays on the ground, get up off the ground defensively? Well, it goes for the offense, too. Brad Stewart falls down. There you see him at the very end of the play. He fell down, but he popped right back up and, and got his guy and cleared the way. Howard again, trying to find a little cutback. And picks up about five on first down. And, and I speak from experience. You know, I go back these nightmares flashbacks of a 1995 Nebraska Cornhusker option offense and 350. 345 left in this first half. Yeah. With this defense, it can't come fast enough to get to that locker room because you just, when they're firing off and everything seems to be working for that offense, you, man, it is it is no fun at all. That's the way it actually was in the second half for this offense against Pitt. Had a Cottrell trying to get to the corner. He will and works his way inside the 40. Another good block. Clinton Lynch that time on the perimeter. Just a six-yard run. Are you telling me that up here you're having Lawrence Phillips and Tommy Frazier flashbacks from the desert? I guess not Not meat sweats, but corn sweats. <laughs> Does it still get you, huh, 20-some years later? Well, you know, just when I said I, I, I felt it in the second half of that pit game, and what it is is this just when, when one thing works, it all works. And if, and if they are disciplined, if they hold on to the football and it's clean, and it's a thing of beauty if you're, if you're on that side, the other side, it's a nightmare. Going to take a deep shot, looking for Searcy. Can't come up with it. First miss in the pass game today from Marshall. Falcons might have gotten away with a hold, too, downfield on Brad Stewart. Another one of the receivers in the pattern. Well, they, were, they were ready for it this time, and a good job of turning and, and running. Looked like Marcus Milton there. But, you know, it, it's funny. Now, uh, three of four, Marshall passing. Each of those three completions were over 30 yards, and that's the way usually they all are in this offense. You, you chip away, chip away, chip away with the run, and then you set them up for the big hit. There aren't a lot of the short dink and dunk passes, so his, per, his percentage should never be super high. Taquan to pitch. Here's Lynch. And he'll be close to another first down. Brandon Harris, the linebacker, making his 29th career start today. Shoves him out of bounds for the Falcons. You know, Clemson did a good job of taking this away, forcing everything, pushing it way out to the edge, not let him turn that corner last weekend. And that's what they've preached, Carl Pellini, this defense all week long, but the, the speed gets him there. Beat everybody out to the edge, and another nice first down. And 
plenty of time to go to try to put it in the end zone before going into the halftime locker room. Nice play of the drive. Here's a little counter, and that is Howard again on the little cutback for five. Howard carries the ball. It'll be second down and five, and the clock approaching two minutes to play. Tackle made by Eldridge Sopero. Jerry Howard's the sophomore, and Mason, you've seen him carry the football. He's the redshirt freshman. And the one thing Paul Johnson has been asking out of his backs is, is to play better without the football. Do a better job of blocking, carrying out, you know, full speed when it's Second not yours. Five, you know, those collisions add up when you're banging with those bodies that are assigned to the dive all day long. Pop a little snap, and Marshall right back Pop on it. Play. Jahazel Lee, the pivot for Georgia Tech in that offensive line, has been plagued by right bad out. snaps. Well, they had three center quarterback exchanges that were fumbled against Clemson. It's something that they've obviously worked on a lot to take it away. That's the first time, fortunately for Georgia Tech, that the ball has hit the ground here today. So there's Lee, who has really been battling it, and he's frustrated. The big fella who, remember Kenny Cooper, the normal Georgia Tech center started the year recovering from a foot injury. And I couldn't really tell that it ever really got there. Yeah. And it was a problem last week against Clemson, as you noted. And Cooper, who's been slowly grinding his way back into the lineup. We thought we might see him at guard today, James. Mm -hmm. Kenny Cooper, and I think there's a chance we're going to see him here at center. But we'll see out of the timeout. Lee is a tackle, and if that was part of our visit yesterday with Paul Johnson. Was about if there's a way you look at your offensive line, and he's got so many guys that can play center guard or guard tackle, or even in Lee's case, center tackle. It turned into a who's on first. That <laughs> Costello, didn't it? Well, I kind of gave up. I said, "Oh, Wes will just take care of me on well, the numbers." Well, they put Connor Hansen in the lineup today, and Connor Hansen getting a start at right guard, and there's Kenny Cooper now. Ponchatoula, Louisiana, double nickel at almost 290. Now he's a preseason All-ACC guy mm -hmm. before the injury last spring. Marshall, counter play this time. And a late pitch, Searcy first down, and then took a shot out of bounds, and that'll add to it. The hit came from Brandon Harris, the linebacker. Been a fairly clean first half in terms After of After the play was over, personal foul, late hit out of bounds. Number one, defense. Half the distance to the goal, first down. First penalty on the Falcons. Well, and you know, and, and the frustration, is, it's what we just talked about. It's, it's frustrating when you've got guys at your feet. You've got this different look than, than you'll have all season long. You've got one week to prepare. They're coming from all angles and everything's starting to work. You know, Brandon Harris, 40 tackles, leads the team. He's, he's a good player for him, but it's, it's not easy for anybody, even the top tackler on the squad. First and goal. Marshall on a follow. And down toward the one. Marshall on the quarterback keeper. You know, it's interesting, Wes. It, it seems to me like Jahazel Lee with the fumbled snap, it, he knew. It, it was, it, he was told, look, if, it, if you fumble a snap, you're out. We're going we're to switch up. We're going to put Kenny Cooper in there. Here he is on the bench right now, just extremely upset because he, he knew it was coming. And, and it's a shame because they had, they had been so clean to this point, almost made it to the two-minute mark, I guess, about you know, before halftime. And Kenny Cooper back in there. But he's, you know, this second half, there's a place for him on this offensive line, like you mentioned. Yep. He's got to pop back up, and it, this has got to be a good energy, good juice on that sidelines. And obviously upset, but he's catch his breath at halftime and come back and be part of this team. Well, the other part is, too, you almost get the sense, and a lot of coaches say this, Paul Johnson being among them, James. In fact, I, we, in our visit with Mike Jinks, I think he mentioned this. It takes three or four games. You think you know in August, but you really don't know till you go week to week and play some games, right, mm -hmm. as to what kind of team you've got. And Jahazel Lee is a part of where they're going in the offensive line, but so is that guy, Kenny Cooper. So is Will Bryan. So is Andrew Marshall. So is Parker Braun. There are things about Zach Quinney and Connor Hansen that 
that Paul Johnson mentioned yesterday. And that's what Georgia Tech had to find out. And really, when we look at it, that's one of the more disappointing pieces of where they've been so yeah. far. And it's happened by injury, execution, a couple different things. Well, and, and part of the reason why Paul Johnson was so optimistic is they finally had some depth up there. Yeah. So if they did have an injury that came along like the one to Kenny Cooper, they felt like they could put the next guy in. And it hasn't been quite as smooth as, as they had hoped. Marshall diving will score. Two on the day, seven on the year for Hamilton, Georgia's Taquan Marshall. One other thing we haven't talked about, the toe of Taquan Marshall. It was an issue early on. He's done a good job of putting that foot in the ground and going north and south here today. It's looking like that toe's getting better for the senior quarterback. And a good job, good push by the offensive line to make it easy for him right there, Rebecca. He told me he was really banged up after that pit game a couple weeks ago, but after the Clemson game, he felt better, specifically that toe, you guys. Wesley Wells lifts the point through. Final half minute of the opening half, and Marshall has scored on the ground, so has Mason and Nathan Cottrell. And Georgia Tech's lead is their largest of the day now at 18. Don't forget, 3.30, game two of our ACC football doubleheader will take you to Winston-Salem. Wake Forest at two and two meets a one and three Rice team. And James, one of the most exciting players in all of college football is the Deacons' Greg Dorch. Absolutely, getting it done. I mean, look at those ranks in the ACC. We get a peek at him today. Get, he'll get Takeo Spikes all fired up. Second in the NCAA all-purpose yards. Yep. Even though he's not just out there making tackles, he gets extra excited when you guys are making big hits, making those tackles. But get a chance to see him today against the Rice Owls. So Dorch and the Deacons welcome the Owls to Winston-Salem at 3.30 today. Who? Dorch and the Deeks. Ah, uh, yeah, I got you. That was my Owl joke. Who? Oh, who? Got it, yeah. It's good. Well, thanks, Will. <laughs> Nicely done. Here's Hargrove from the two. First time we've seen Rabion Hargrove on the return. He'll split back up the field and cross the 30 to the 31 and with 25 Radio seconds Hall left and one timeout left to go for the Falcons of Mike Jinks. Well, productive opening half for Georgia Tech, James. And, you know, even, even if those aren't just four touchdowns, just the fact that they've they played more as a unit, they've taken care of that football with the exception of the one center quarterback exchange. Gosh, it's got to feel a lot better go into that halftime locker room right now, especially when you go back just a couple weeks ago, that pit first half was all kinds of ugly. Yep. It's night and day what you've got here so far. But 28 points on offense. Ought to make Coach Paul Johnson happy. And a little delay, and Claire broke away from the first one, won't get beyond that. Claire carries the ball. And in fact, will lose the yard in a timeout taken by the Falcons. Boy, Andrew Claire. Got hit right away in the backfield. And there's a look at Mike Jinks as his team gets a timeout called. Well, our Toyota Let's Go Places brought to you by Toyota. How about the neighborhood Georgia Tech lives in, James? We were touching on this, and Rebecca said something about it kind of at the top a little bit. This shows you who's in the top ten. <laughs> It's located around them. My goodness. You know, and, and, and that's who you're recruiting against. At times, yes. Yep. Yeah. A, lot, a lot of lot talented athletes here in the state of Georgia, right here in, in the Atlanta area. Yep. And it's not very hard for them to hit the road, go to college. After this timeout, let's see what they got. Backdoor throw. Wide side of the field, that's Marlowe. Another catch by R.B. Marlowe will get him a first down. Clock will stop with 10 seconds left, but BG's out of timeout. Boy, they're on the ball in a hurry, aren't they? Yep. My goodness. And a spike by Daigie will stop the clock. A little Falcons like to say a little Isaac Azumba going on here late in the first half, huh? <laughs> I heard from some Bowling Green alums who said, if you get Isaac Azumba in the broadcast, you'll, you'll be our favorite. And I said, well, I'll get you Isaac Azumba then. You're already my favorite before you said that, Wes. <laughs> well, 
enough. And I, I said, well, that's like North Carolina uses Isaac Azumba. And they go, no, no, Bowling Green started <laughs> Isaac Azumba. <laughs> Eight seconds left for Daggy and the Falcons. Sacked. St. Amour has terrorized this first half. And that will send the teams to the locker rooms. Nine-yard loss on another hit behind the line by the big defensive end from Sewanee, Georgia. Making a living back there. You got to put a body on him. Just ask uh, Jared Dagey. Let's go downstairs. Honda dealer of the Carolinas. Here's Rebecca with Paul Johnson. Thank you very much, Wes. Coach, your offense has scored four touchdowns in the last four possessions. What's making them so effective today? Well, we're executing a little better on offense, and we've got to find a way to – we're not giving up points, but we got to kind of find a way to stop and get them off the field on defense. All right, thanks, Coach. Yeah. All right, Paul Johnson, the Jackets lead by 18. Hardy's ace. Better job of in the second half. I like to see our defense do a better job of stopping that Georgia Tech air raid offense and giving up the big passing plays. And just that it. simple, right? Just that simple. All right, Coach, good luck. Thank you. <laughs> James, <laughs> how about that? When's the last time you heard a coach say, we need to stop Georgia Tech from throwing a rock? <laughs> well, look at that 121 yard <laughs> passing in the first half, and those were on three completions. Taquan Marshall, three of four in the first half. You know, with Paul Johnson, you look at the 13-19 the there that Bowling Green has had the football. They haven't given up a lot of points, but Paul Johnson wants to get that football back. He, you know, it's like like the kid wanting to play with the toy. Hey, give me my toy back. I'm ready to play. He's having a good time today. It's been rough here the last couple weeks. Three straight losses for Georgia Tech. It's he wants to get back into that groove and, and keep it clean like the USF game when they were running up and down the field. With like 600 yards of offense, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. That's right. By the way, important game today for Georgia Tech and then it leads into another important game next Friday night at Cardinal Stadium in Louisville James. Well that'll be an, a real interesting game. We just saw Louisville on the road at Virginia last week. Nate Needham will kick it away. Here's Wanye Thomas in the corner at the three. Looking here to the near side. Thomas circling. Got a block. Now flag has been thrown well behind as Thomas long strides. 10-5, touchdown. There is a flag down. But that might be 98 yards. Return. Holding, number 12, return team. Wow. Half the distance to the goal from the spot of the foul. First down. Bruce Jordan Swilling is guilty of a 90, of a hold that'll take away a 96-yard kickoff return. Well, there was no doubt with that wall. They were trying to set up that wall. Here, here's 12. There's Jordan Swilling. And that wall was set. And, well, mm, it, it, it looked like almost like two guys on him, and they knocked him down. And Wow. Wow. It just... That's Scott Morgan talking to Bruce Jordan let's, Swilling. Let's, let's take another look at it. Here he is once again. I mean, he had him. It just. He was, <laughs> that's a tough one. You see a whole heck of a lot more than that throughout the course of a game. That's that's a tough one. Wow, big block here. Off the seven, the toss. That's Lynch. Takes away a 96-yard mm. kickoff return by Wanye Thomas. Second penalty of the other day against Georgia Tech, by the way. Well, and, and both of them were on special teams. The other one was a hold on on the punt return team on yep. the ball that went out of bounds to help out the 15-yard punt, make it tack on some yardage to that one. Again, the guys on the outside, those B-backs and receivers are doing a good job blocking here. Marshall, and he'll be a step shy of the first down. Marshall carries the ball. Well, Kyle Jr., the stop there on Taquan Marshall. Well, Mike Jinx called it the air raid, James. <laughs> yeah, well, at times, that's, you know, you, you got to shut down one phase. It, it's, it's hard enough to stop the, the running attack. But Taquan Marshall, those first two completions, he had to put it on the money. It was good coverage. This, that last play there to Lynch is, is a little bit more of the norm because you'll get guys biting on those, those run fakes so hard against this Georgia Tech team. 
but showing you that he can drop it in there too. And got a little lean up front, and I believe that was. Let's see. It looked like that might have been Demonte Hagler of Bowling Green who leaned in. Stuart Mullins is the referee today. He, he leaned in, and it's almost like he got stuck over there. Offside, defense, entering the neutral zone, causing an offensive reaction. Five-yard penalty, first down. Keep an eye on 35 here, James. It's first and 10. Once he leans in, if the offensive guy reacts, there's the right. flag. If he gets back before the offensive guy reacts. Right. There's Carl Pellini, defensive coordinator. First down, play fake for Marshall. Uh-oh, another guy running loose. And the ball is caught. And this is Steven Dolphus out of Westside High School in Mason. It's and making it 6-5 that hauled it in from Taquan Marshall for 39 yards. Oh, Taquan Marshall, you know, it's, there's a happiness, but it's also a little bit of a frustration because he just he had to wait so long on and had about five steps on the defender. He's had to wait and come back. It's fortunate Georgia Tech that it got there before the defender. Well, that one could have been a whole lot more, but hey, we'll take it. That's the fourth completion of the day on five attempts. There's George Mason. Rattling up the middle for about six or seven on first down. So Carl Brooks made the stop there. Well, they're Brooks excited is, about Carl Brooks. Yeah, they are. Freshman from Lansing, Michigan on that stop. Well, Carl Pellini talked on and on about Brooks, didn't he? In our visit this week. 6'4", 235, freshman. True freshman. Marshall, option. Yeah, nice play by the Falcons there. Colby Coleman, James, the linebacker from over at Hoover, Alabama, stayed home here. Nice recognition on the Georgia Tech offensive play. Yeah, does a good job of, of breaking down and not overrunning it. When you've got an athlete like Taquan Marshall, you want to get out there so fast, sometimes you, you overcommit a little bit too much and he makes you pay. Does a good job there of keeping a nice broad stance and they, the ability to come back and drop it. Straight ahead, Mason. He will go untouched. 33 yards for the touchdown. Second touchdown run of the day for Mason. You know, again, it's interesting. You've got a, a Georgia Tech offensive line. I had a talk with Sean Bedford, who was a great center here for Georgia Tech at halftime. He does the radio. He's, he's an analyst on the radio station now. And I asked him, I said, why are they not cutting as much as they used to? And he said, he's, he's not really sure. But again, they're on that touchdown. Anytime you see a, a touchdown run like that, usually a lot of guys on the ground. Five for five are the Jackets today. Pretty good effort. Jordan Mason in the end zone for a second time today. Jackets in front, 20 from the ball game, plus the ACC's biggest rivalries are on tap. We'll look at some of the best matchups coming up next week. And ACC All Access, check your local listings. We're looking forward to being in Raleigh yeah. next Saturday for a 12-30 start with NC State and Boston College. Kick by Sean Davis and Ravion Hargrove. Juggles it, touches it, and now we'll try and make something of it. Wow, big oh. lick, shy of the 20 there. Looked like Tariq Carpenter back downfield again. Avery Sherwell also in on the mix for Georgia Tech. Well, that was ugly. We had a guy that downed it, remember, on the one yard line from Louisville last week. Right. That was 
Good job by Hargrove, though. He can pick it up and go straight ahead and get something of it. I mean, to get it up to the 17-yard line is there's a lot of help. Boy, did he pay the price on the back end. Bryson Denley has come in the ball game. 17-yard line for Jarrett Dagey. Pressured again out here in the flat. Denley incomplete. And BG, Bowling Green is uh, actually fortunate there. That would have been a five-yard loss had it been ruled a catch. Well, let's go to our bad boy mowers covering ground before we get to second down, James. And all about Taquan Marshall and the jacket run game today. Look at that. Go back to that USF game, the rushing yards, 419. USF still hasn't stopped him, but it was Georgia Tech stopping themselves. Tough day against a, an outstanding Clemson defense last weekend. And that is Miller, the catch at the 24. And when you see those rushing numbers, remember that in that South Florida game, Georgia Tech lost Marietta's Cervante Benson for the season with an ACL injury. You see his numbers. He was off to a spectacular start, James. Well, and it's it's good to see him out there just being a part of the team however he can, helping to keep the energy down. There's a blitz off the edge. They call that a catch, and the ball's thrown behind Denley incomplete. And now flag's going to be thrown. And that is a late hit, I believe, against a Johnny foul. Kerr. Roughing the passer. Number 38, defense. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. It's going to be Kerr. They bring him from his corner spot. The, the corner blitz. The, you know, you, you've got to pick and choose a team that does a lot of three, uh, three drop, three step drops, and throwing the football in a hurry. When you bring them, they, they dialed it up right. If you don't get there, you can't cost your team. You're going to get off the field. Now you give them a fresh set of downs. Play fake that time, and Victor Alexander hit Daggies. He cut it loose. Daggies passing complete. Look at this. Boy, they're starting to find the timing on this one, James. It's been a rough start to the second half. Here for Daigie in this offense. Defense as well when you look at what Georgia Tech did on their opening drive. All right. But it, it was a, an offense. It looked pretty sharp at times in the first half. There's Daigie again, and this time it's Morris the catch. And Quentin Morris, 6'4", sophomore, Richmond, Texas. Taken down. Third catch of the day for the big fella, short of a first down. He is a big fella, and he's, he's very agile for a big fella, too. Watching a couple of those games from earlier this season. Caught that same pass against the Maryland secondary, made a couple of nice moves, but a good job of closing on him here. Ooh, that's just a drive by and knock off that helmet after the play. Here's Rico Fry from just up 75 at Cartersville. One of the two Georgians on the Bowling Green roster, and he gets the first down yardage. Fry came into the ball game with 76 yards, but 79 of it came last week in the loss to Miami for the youngster who's played for Joey King at Cartersville High School, the former Purple Hurricane with Trevor Lawrence. Trevor Lawrence. That's yeah. what I was about to ask you. They, yeah. That was kind of a heck of a football team. Yeah. Fry can go. Nice pick up there. Boy, did they need it. Here's Fry again. And Brent Mitchell. Hit him right at the line. Yard out of it for Rico Fry. Well, Nate Woody's defense, they're, they're very physical here in this second half. They've come out here in the, in the second half wanting to have a little bit of fun, get involved. There's a look at Coach Woody. He'd love to see a nice turnover right here. And get involved in that party. Daigie, ball is loose. Scooped up. Big fella. And I think Desmond Branch had it, and he did. Interception last week. And we almost had rumbling and stumbling from 99 here. Just unblocked on, on the edge, Victor Alexander. My goodness. That's your, your best rusher coming off the edge, and there's nobody there for him, the mix-up. And big Desmond Branch, oh, there was plenty of rumbling and stumbling. But just untouched quarterback's blind side. It's hard to tell with the gold numbers if it's 89 or 99. Either Antoine Owens or Desmond Branch. I think 
it's Antoine Owens. And it was. And here's Georgia Tech working the edges. Quay Searcy down to about the 10 after the fumble. And Owens got Owens got down to the 16 on the return. So Georgia Tech was set up and ready to go in the CPI security red zone, James. Victor Alexander just rocked Davey. Yeah, I mean, it, it was, it, and that was about the fifth hard shot that he had taken. And here there's 8.30 left in the third quarter in this second half after coming out of the locker room. Jerry Howard to be back. Here's Marshall with a bit of a follow play. And depending on the forward spot, they the first down. down. He got gang tackled by the Falcons. Clint Stevens was first. The corner. Tackle made by Clint Stevens. You know, it's it's interesting. The, the the big concern with Carl Pelini and his defense coming into this week was missed tackles. They missed 28 in the loss to Miami of Ohio last weekend. I haven't seen a lot of missed tackles. That's the good news. The bad news is there haven't been guys in position so many times where you've had guys just running free to the end zone. Straight ahead, Howard. He'll walk in the end zone. Six for six of the Jackets now, James. Jerry Howard into the end zone for the first time in 2018 for Georgia Tech. Well, Parker Braun is fun to watch. The guard. Look at him. I mean, down, when you've got three big offensive linemen, when you're five yards out and you've got three big offensive linemen led by Parker Braun, stumbling themselves into the end zone, just blowing defenders off their feet and back over the goal line. Well, that's a thing of beauty. Freshman Wesley Wells. He's getting a workout today on extra points, isn't he? A lot of practice. He needs it. He's a new guy. Watch the new guys up front. Watch him. Parker Braun up there. There's Jahazel Lee back in there, slamming that helmet on someone else. You up. TikTok, you don't stop. Now, you would do this, weren't you? You'd, you'd do that, wouldn't you? Here is Ravion Hargrove on the return. Working across the 20 and taking down about the 21. How about today's quick and loans right play, James? Defensive guys, y'all like to touch the ball. Well, heck yeah, getting getting in on the fun a little bit. They played pretty well defensively, especially coming out of that halftime locker room. Victor Alexander with the big pop from behind on Daigie. And then it was, it was Antoine Owens. Those numbers were so tough. Thought for a little while it might have been Branch, but Antoine Owens picking it up, trying to get to the paint, gets it down there close enough for the offense to go punch it in. So after the turnover, Bowling Green off its 22, and Ravion Hargrove has come in the ball game. He's at that running back spot, and he'll get the call here on first down. Coach has told us he was slick. And boy, good play. Made a lot out of a carry to the perimeter, got nine, did Hargrove. Nicely done before Lamont Simmons made the tackle on the freshman from Trotwood, Ohio, who's that state's player of the year a season ago, James. Well, you can see why scat back kind of guy. They've, they've got some change-ups there in the running game from Claire to Hargrove, even to Bryson Denley, who can really run. Okay, you're going to fake it. Now give it again, Hargrove. First down, working toward the 35. The numbers on Ravion Hargrove out of Trotwood, Ohio, are almost like a misprint. His high school career, 7,364 yards and 100 touchdowns. And that's rushing, James. 7,300 yards and 100 touchdowns rushing. Well, and just a freshman, then you got the sophomore, Denley, who was one of the best backs in Texas, right. was one of the best sprinters in Texas. Texas ran a 10-4-7 in high school. Middle of the field, this is uh, Wayne Prather with the catch, and Bowling Green's got a little momentum on a 20-yard play. First pass after a couple of nice runs by Hargrove, and now Jarrett Daigie's got something to, to go with here as we get in the final six and a half of quarter three. Daigie, quick throw this time, middle of the field. And that is RB Barlow the third. Another first down. And Pudabong is shaken up. He's on a knee 
at the Georgia Tech 40 over near the Falcons bench, their wide receiver who had the touchdown catch in the first half. And Rivera also looks like he might be shaking up the grad transfer from Wofford. There's Derek Pudavong. He's already got that knee brace on. And yep. then you mentioned Rivera, who's got two interceptions, had another pick against Clemson last weekend. And we'll put it on with that beautiful catch. Uh oh, that didn't look good. Earlier. No. Hope the best for Derek Putavon. And Malik Rivera is also going to walk from the field. So they'll take a look at Pudavong. Don't forget Evan yeah. Lepler, Takeo Spikes, Lindsey Rowley standing by in Winston-Salem at 3.30. So right now if it's 2.10, that would mean that it's probably just now come to a boil. What's that? The rice. The rice. Yeah, you're gonna, you got to <laughs> steam it for a while, you know. You can't just eat it. you got to let it steam. So they're about to let it steam. Owls will be ready to ride at 3.30. Against Sam Hartman and the Deacons. Trying to get back on track after a loss to Notre Dame and Boston College. Middle of the field throw. Oh, a big hit put on. As Miller hauls in another one. Boy, Scott Miller's been impressive today. Working principally from the slot in the offense for Mike Jinks. Boy, he's slow getting up there, too. And, and this is an example. Here you get, you've got some time. It'll roll by, by a couple extra seconds for Daigie. And, and, and the weapons down the field, you see flashes of what can be a pretty good football team. Offline throw, trying to go to the far side. Incomplete. It may have gotten a hand on it. It looked like Owens or is that jacket defender out there, James? But, you know, it's you look at that Oregon game, Wes. Yeah. You look at the Maryland game. And this is a team first half. They go into the locker room, and, hey, it's it's looking pretty good. Yep. Even today, it, you know, they came out of the, set, the locker room in the second half and just all kinds of uh, just consistency. And, and, you know, and sometimes it gets down to a depth issue when it's later in the game when you can get bodies worn down where some of these, these schools that have a, a ton of depth, they can ro rotate those bodies in there and keep them fresh. Yep. Third down. Play fake. Long throw. The catch made Marlowe inside the five, and he fumbled it. And oh. Georgia Tech got it in the end zone with Jalen Johnson. Was that a touchback? I think it was. Yep. Fumbled it into the end zone, and then Jalen Johnson scooped it up. Well, they'll take a look at a few things here. First of all, we have a fumble from the field of play into the end zone, through the end zone. Result of the play is a touchback. First and 10, Georgia Tech. Well, they'll take a look to see if it is a fumble. Here we'll get a look at it, but they're also going to look maybe to add a targeting call on here because that's a defenseless player. But what an excellent job by Georgia Tech to keep it in bounds. Not R.B. Marlowe was down before he fumbled the ball. Well, the answer to that is yes. See, boom, he's down, and then the ball comes flying out. So that should be overturned. Now, as they look at it upstairs, watch this. It doesn't matter if the play is dead. That is what the replay should do is, is add a, a targeting there. And I hate to say add a targeting, you have to throw this, this kid out. But if that's not targeting, then, then what is? A, a defenseless player and going right at the hat, and that's Colin DeBoer. And that would, that would mean that he would have to miss the first half of next, next week's game as well. Yep. But this should be Bowling Green's football right there on the goal line. Well, Stuart Mullins, long visit on the headset. And the way this crew is looking, it looks like the call is going to be reversed. The center judge has gone out toward the two. After review, the runner was down prior to losing possession of the ball. The ball will be placed at the two-yard line. First and goal for Bowling Green. Please reset the clock to 4 minutes, 59 seconds. 4.59 on the clock, and it will start on my signal. And the board... The board will get one on the house here, James. Yeah, well, it's, you know, and I and, and I hate the thought of, I understand the rule, and I, but I just, I hate when kids get, get kicked out just trying to be aggressive as it is. This one, they're saying the ball's down on the ground here. Straight ahead by Denley. 
And he's held up short. Second down and goal now. Good play by Marlowe and good ball hunting by Georgia Tech. And Daigie just going to try and lean in, and he didn't get there. And who was it? Was it Kerr, 38? Who, who, who was it that, that had the ball in, in the back of the end zone? Jalen Johnson. Okay, Jalen yeah. Johnson. A fantastic job because yeah. if, if one of his toes is on the line. Then it would just go back to the spot of the fumble, and it would have been Bowling Green ball. Uh -huh. Off or not, doesn't matter. Third down and goal. Let's see if they can get a big goal line stand here for Georgia Tech. They go to a power set to the left side. Daigie tried to get in the end zone, and... This is on third and goal, and I don't think he got in this time. And then now they're ruling him in. <laughs> the fight around the chalk. <laughs> it was like, you know, that shot we have of Buzz where all the students are passing him around in the stands. There's the initial surge. Saying him more. Well, he looks in. <laughs> well, I guess. <laughs> well, uh, well, but the thing is. Is it took so long to, to say it's a touchdown, right? You know how you talked about uh, having the lasers for first downs? Yep. Why don't we put GPS in the football? Ooh. A little VAR like they've got in the Premier League or in tennis. I like that. Or like the hockey puck used to be. Right, they went yeah. through, they experimented a while in the NHL. Yeah. This is a tough kid right here. Yes, it is. Mike Jinks has got a pretty good quarterback. He, he's taking some shots. Got some good weapons to throw to. And the point after good by Needham. 42-17, our new score at the 355 mark. After Jarrett Daigie gets the one-yard plunge. <laughs> It'll go as a run, but it was more of a lean and a dive. Nate Woody's defense, though, has done pretty well most of this day, James. They've forced some turnovers in our Honda Generators power play. Comes courtesy of the Georgia Tech defense. They've been hustling around Victor Alexander. There he is applying the pressure, but he's also come up with a big sack as well. Been in on a lot of tackles. Power plays plural. Had a big old S to that because there have been a lot of good plays from this defense. And there's one where they got got around the party in a little bit, trying to go to the end zone like that offense has been so many times here today. And Nate Woody in his first season here. Well, Georgia Tech. We've been on the phone with him a couple times, in person a couple times, and I already sense you and he have a kindred spirit with one another about defensive football. Yeah, defensive. And you know what? He, he, he likes the swimmers, too. He told me he swims every day up, yeah. the, up the hill at Georgia Tech. So we, we had a good talk about swimming. A couple, couple has-been football players that like to go get in the pool and got a family full of swimmers that – Bury me. Nate Woody probably buries me too in that pool. Uh oh. Little short kick here. Shenanigans in display. This is Avery Showell. Another Cartersville Purple Hurricane with the football. And Showell will be knocked out of bounds up near the 48 49 yard line. Heads up play by the red shirt freshman, James. Kickoff is fielded by number 13, Avery Showell. Showell, show enough. And he has had some talent up there in Cartersville. But that's a good job of trying to make something happen with it. So Showell gets a hand on it. And now Tobias Oliver takes over as the Georgia Tech quarterback. Jackets scrimmage from the 49. Now you're intrigued by this young player, aren't you? The way he runs it in to a degree through it last week, I guess, right? Just a freshman. This is a... Bowling Green going to be flat. Illegal, illegal substitution. Illegal 12 substitution. players in the defensive formation. Defense. Five-yard penalty. First down. And some, some good things throughout the season here in his redshirt freshman year, but, you know, a, a lot of them, you sit down and, and you, you're brought back to reality at times with Paul Johnson. He's, you know, he, he does a lot of good individual things. you got to play within this scheme. Good Oliver job there, stretching. Yeah, got manhandled by Jonah Harper, redshirt senior from South Euclid, Ohio. Tackle made by Jonah Harper. There's Taquan Marshall. Well, and you know what? Just a, we spent a lot of time around Taquan Marshall. He's such a good kid, such a good leader for this team. You got to feel good for him to go out and have a day like he did here today against Bowling Green. 
try to get back on track in his senior year. Here's the pitch. Omari Jarrett diving out of bounds in Bowling Green territory. Richard Jr. from just west of Atlanta at Douglasville, Georgia. Here's a look at Tobias Oliver on the ground. The three touchdowns, by the way, against South Florida. Did a great job coming in against Charlie Strong's team. And Taquan Marshall got banged up a little bit, and that was the game that they lost Benson as well. There's a fake to Mason, and Oliver loose. And here comes his fourth touchdown run. Touchdown, 34 yards for Tobias Oliver. Quarterback buddy down there in a hurry to pat him on the back to Quan Marshall, senior and redshirt freshman. Three plays for Georgia Tech, 51 yards on the touchdown drive. And the point after by Wells is good. <laughs> And following that, that lead man and just getting through that, that initial wave, doing such a good job up front. Really impressed with the offensive line of Georgia Tech here today. Now they finally they earned the right to go back down and cut a few people on that one. Taking it to the house the rest of the way is Tobias Oliver. Design follow of that. Be back right there, and then it's off to the races, and no one's going to catch him as he gets to the corner. Paul Johnson's team now seven for seven, James. 49 points. It's Saturday night, I feel a little bit better for CPJ, Coach Paul Johnson, here tonight. Five different guys have been in the end zone so far today. Jordan Mason twice, Taquan Marshall twice, Nathan Cottrell, Jerry Howard, and now the Redshirt freshman from Northside High School in Warner Robins. Ravion Hargrove, Rico Fry deep for Bowling Green. Davis going to hang this up. And here's Hargrove at the two. And boy, took a big leg. Is that Carpenter? Wow. Tariq Carpenter. Tackle made by Tariq Carpenter. You know what? Tariq Carpenter doesn't mind no. getting involved, does he? He's a tough dude. He's <laughs> fun to watch. You know, earlier, er, the first quarter of the game, he was being held something off of, rip, <laughs> ripped those hands off, went and made a big old play. Right. Yeah, 29, just a sophomore. So Bowling Green going to take over. 22-yard line again for Mike Jinks' club. And orange and brown and number two at quarterback reminds you a little bit of Tim Cow. <laughs> Here's Rico Fry. 30-35, one of the better runs of the day. 14 yards for Fry. Fry carries the ball. And first and 10 at the 36. First down, nice job up front. Good job of getting up and moving there by John Kurtz. This is an offensive line. Lorenzo Tabor didn't make the, the game here today. He was a scratch because of food poisoning. How about the size of this group, though? They had that Derek Downs at left tackle today. He's 6'8", 298 out there. That's like those big Louisville bodies that we had last week. Damn. Now a flag is thrown. So you got Downs, he's 6'8", 298. Full start, number 77, offense. Five yard penalty, first down. And there's a look at uh, Jack Kramer, or I beg your pardon, that's Kurtz. John Kurtz, the transfer from Cincinnati. He's 303 on a 6'6 frame. It's a lot of skyline chili. <laughs> they got Mike Jinks has got a lot. Austin Labus at right tackle, he's 6'6", 295. Caleb Bright, the center, 6'4", 306. Kramer, they're excited about 310 junior on a 6 3 frame. He's the little guy. <laughs> <laughs> Play
play fake. Here's Dagey. Cuts it loose, and boy, Wayne Prather, another nice catch in traffic. And that'll be around the 40 yard line. It's an ISO, nice route run, puts those feet in the ground and, it, and decent coverage. But you know what? It, it, at some point, you got it. Oh, it looks like it might have been banged up a little bit. It's Lamont Simmons. Lamont Simmons, and even coming out of his break, that's it's kind of odd. But you know, it, it was going to say, gosh, you got to attack it. You got good coverage, but come after a little bit more aggressive. But it was it was almost just coming out of his break. Yep. It's really kind of odd, and it's. Hmm. And so the Georgia Tech Sports medical folks are out there. And Lamont Simmons. Looks like they're fiddling with the left arm there. And that's Dr. John Zerosians with the white hat on with his back to us. He's the team orthopedist. Oh. Got that hand caught in there. It just got right run arm. through. Mm. Yeah. So they're tending to Lamont Simmons. Mm. Georgia Tech, of course, is headed to Louisville next Friday. Lamont, don't close your eyes next time. You can scare everybody at home <laughs> watching. I, you know, <laughs> I didn't like that. Yeah. Mm, you see the young man started there. his college career out at Southern California is transferred here from Jacksonville, Florida originally. Quick check of the coastal. Boy, Miami, three defensive scores on Thursday mm. night, James. 47 points. DJ Dallas had 114 yards. Big one later today in Durham at the fabled horseshoe on the West Campus, James. <laughs> How about that? Number 22, Duke. How about that? Top 25. Duke and Virginia Tech. And a pair of backup quarterbacks involved in that, by the way. Here's the long throw. This is another catch for Miller. And he'll break free and step down the near sideline for a first down. He was able to spin around Quez Jackson, a linebacker who had gotten out in space. That's nine catches today for the senior Scott Miller, who came in with 165 career catches for Bowling Green. First down, Is Bryson Denley fighting for what will be about two yards toward the 45 as we work through the final half minute now of this third period. What, what is Virginia Tech going to look like when they show up today after that upset to Old Dominion last weekend? That's that's what I, just looking at this schedule here today, that's what I'm most curious about is, is how is Virginia Tech going to respond after that huge upset? Right. Oh. How about David Cutcliffe coaching up those quarterbacks? He loses Daniel Jones, and everyone's like, oh, shoot. Here we go. Play fake. Daigie. Wayne Prather, another catch. Almost stripped of it and held on. And that'll get us to the end of the period. We go to the fourth in Atlanta. Georgia Tech has scored touchdowns on every offensive possession today. They lead Bowling Green by 32 in North Carolina that were hit two weeks ago from Hurricane Florence. Ravion Hargrove in the backfield with Jared Dagey as we go to quarter four. Third and short for the Falcons. And Hargrove, I don't believe, will get there and it'll be fourth down for Mike Jenks here. Well, it was a Bowling Green team successfully went for it on fourth and about one. First drive of the game, we'll do it again. And Nagy just slams into the line, running behind his center bright. And it is a first and 10. And how about a quick check of the North Myrtle Beach Convention and Visitors Bureau weather. We've had a very pleasant day. Of course, we always have to gauge how pleasant the day is when we talk to Rebecca afterwards, right, James? <laughs> But we've had a uh, chance of thunderstorms here, but this has been a very nice day. Humidity still a little sticky. Deggy back foot throw and broken up. Caleb Oliver, the redshirt freshman from Oakland High School outside of Nashville at Murfreesboro, Tennessee, is a guy that we saw star in the Alcorn State game, James, but getting some chances here in the second half. Absolutely. Look at those long arms. 
and make up some ground not only with his feet but nice reach out there as well. Good job timing it up too. Yeah, it's here in a couple weeks it'll be cool enough for us to go down and take that pregame picture with Rebecca. <laughs> she keeps asking for it. It's just a little too warm. Here's Daigie on the pocket near side. That's underthrown. Georgia Tech got a hand in there, Rebecca. They did, and it looks like Bowling Green might have to finish this game without one of their receivers. Uh, Quentin Morris came out of the game. It appears he has some sort of rib injury right now, so he is questionable at best, but it looked like he was in a lot of pain, guys. All right, thank you. Yeah, we already saw Pudavong leave the game earlier, so those two studs on the outside. They've still got Miller, but they got a big third down here. Third and the full ten. Here's the pressure. They get it to Hargrove with blockers in front. Ravion Hargrove inside the 15 to the 10. First and goal now for the Eagles, or the Falcons, on a 27-yard play to Hargrove as Malik Rivera made the tackle. A little big man. Tough, nice play call here. You get everybody coming after it, thinking you're going to get another big play, and a sack on third down set up perfectly for the screen. Good job by the offensive line. Big man John Kurtz, and since he transferred, was out there leading the way. Hargrove doing the rest. So Jared Dagey goes to work. Little throw for the corner and caught, but out of bounds. Over there on the backside was Noah Massey. He's 6'4 freshman from Houston. That's a nice catch. Just about it, a nice throw and catch. Little hitch and go. You know, and again, we talked about it earlier, it's, it's not a fade here, but still, you give yourself a little bit of padding. You got a chance, and that's a good call. Foot's out of bounds. Denley the carry, and he got smashed. He got knocked back by the Jackets front. Serge Henderson was in there. Also, Henri St. Amour. Big day by 94. St. Amour, the big junior defensive end. He, he's really been active today for Nate Woody. They don't want to give up another touchdown here, that's for sure. He, Owen Green can, he used to try to hammer away. But. Daigie, end zone, intercepted! David Curry. Well, excellent job. Andy McCollum, the inside linebacker coach, coached up Red Curry. Right. And What's going to happen? Syracuse there? has just scored, and they're trying to push it back to a 10 point lead early in the fourth at Tiger Town. And here's Oliver on the run again for Georgia Tech to start the drive. That'll be another first down. By the way, David Hale of ESPN.com, James, mm -hmm. has reported just after we went on the air today that Daniel Jones is going to start tonight. Oh. For Duke. Well, that's good to hear. I mean, that's talk good. about a miraculous recovery from a clavicle injury. Now, it was his non-throwing shoulder, but nonetheless, right? Well, without a doubt, it didn't look like it was going to be a few more weeks at least before they'd get him back. And Oliver that time got hammered by McBride. And we mentioned the quarterbacks. And, uh, of course, earlier today, very early in the ball game at Frank Howard Field, Trevor Lawrence went down. Now, Kosey Perry only threw it 12 times Thursday night, James. Yeah, the Miami fans are fired up to have him back in there. And Virginia Tech fans hurting a little bit. Josh Jackson, such a good quarterback, an outstanding leader. He's gone for the season. It'll be Ryan Willis in there leading the show for the Hokies. There's a toss coming near side and trying to work his way up the backside. So Clemson's got Wake Forest next week. And, you know, here we sit in Atlanta. There's no telling what the whole protocol will be with Trevor Lawrence. Right. You know, last I saw Syracuse was still up. Well, it's 23-13 now. Eric Dungy just scored. Early wow. on a fourth and goal, by the way. Wow. Yeah. Well, and you know what? Let that be a lesson to all these kids. I mean, you look across the college football landscape and all these kids that. There's Oliver looking for camp and incomplete. But, you know, we 
kid at Florida after the Kentucky game didn't get enough carry, so he transferred before he, he hit the showers. And, he, you know, the, the, the kid at Tennessee that wouldn't go in the game late, they kicked him off the team. And it hurts. I mean, my goodness. You imagine being Kelly Bryant? And I get it, but it's, there's so many injuries out there, and there's so many things that can happen. And that's it's, – it's hard to put yourself in Kelly Bryant's shoes – but it sure seems like a football team when you've got all those guys that come back that could have gone for self and gone to the NFL and started making millions in a hurry. It's, it's tough. Here's Presley Harvin. This will be Georgia Tech's first punt of the day, by the way. Snap a little high. Harvin, though, drives a beauty toward Marcus Milton, who will let it hit, and it checks up. And Georgia Tech's Jalen Johnson going to touch it down right around the 10. Hey, those gunners are lucky that it checked up because nobody ran past. They both, and that was a huge issue. Paul Johnson was upset after last week. They got to get, get that cleaned up. And then a home game two weeks from today against Duke. And then at Virginia Tech after their bye, James. That'll be their first break in the schedule. And then you see those last three have been a point of discussion for for most of the offseason, Miami, Virginia, Georgia, and you throw Carolina on top of there with Duke. And look at that. That's five straight Atlantic Division games. Well, and that Virginia, they they owe Virginia one. They'll be looking for some payback there when Virginia comes to town. It was back and forth last year at the end of the season. Virginia, Bronco Mendenhall, taking Virginia to a bowl game for the first time in a few years. Jaggy trying to get it to... Wayne Prather here on the perimeter. He gets taken down out of bounds. And just under 11 to play by Bruce Jordan Swilling, the linebacker. But you know one that you, you, you go down that list and one that really jumps out at you just because it's always such a good game is, is Duke and Georgia Tech is usually a fun one, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. I mean, I'm preaching to the choir here talking to you. You've been a part of a lot of those, but man. And here's Denley. He slips out across the 15. Yeah, they'll call it the 15. It'll be third and four coming up for Bowling Green. Been fun to kind of dive into Mike Jinks' program this week in our coverage to get a feel for everybody knows Dino Babers was there, Dave Clawson at Wake Forest. There is a current ACC flair of coaches who we now know that were in, at the Bowling Green job. And, of course, Matt Johnson was the quarterback who helped upset Northern Illinois in the MAC championship game that year and what ended up being Clawson's, I think, final ball game as the Falcons head coach. D.J. Durkin was a player for Urban Meyer. Though. That's right. Some of those good teams. And here is Denley. He'll have the first down across the 21. But Mike Jinks now in season three came over from Texas Tech. He was hired by Sean Kingston, the former athletics director. Bill Mooseberger is the current athletic director of Bowling Green. And James, you and I touched on this earlier in the week. This is some kind of football league now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and he brings the... Texas Tech air raid influence offense into the back. And here's the give, and Denley going to be swallowed up behind the line of scrimmage. It's not hashtag Maxon for nothing, James, right? <laughs> well, and, and you know, it's this is a, a football team that not not sure what they've got waiting in the wings. We, I know they've got some some good looking younger guys like Noah Massey out there at the wide receiver sure. position. They lose a couple big time seniors in Miller and Pudavang uh, to graduation. But they've got a quarterback. If they can put some weapons around them, they could really be scary. Uh-oh! Oh! Oh! Really? St. Amore gets the pick six. <laughs> How about that? Oh my goodness. So that, it's Branch that gets his hand on it. That's a big old Branch. Puts the limb up there and knocks it right up to his buddy. Wow. The, the defensive line, they're going to have a fun week in the meeting room watching, going back and watching this tape, watching their guys oh, score touchdowns, run about 20 yards. Yep. Interception return for St. Amore. How about that? Oh, yeah, those hands. It looked like Pudavang reaching out there and plugging it in. Touchdown, Nate Woody and the defense happy. 56-17, and the latest score comes from the defense, James. 
about Desmond Branch. If you're not going to get there, that mirror technique, get those hands up. Does so, knocks the ball straight up. Don Reese St. Amour. Davis will kick it away toward Hargrove. And Arabian Hargrove juggles it at the one. And back up field into a stack around the 20. And that's where the Falcons will get started. How about our Jimmy Hargrove Johns? Freaky, freaky, freaky. Freak performance to Quan Marshall. Freaky, freaky, fresh through the air. How about Marshall through the air, West Five of six passing for 160 yards. That's freaky and always freaky on the ground. To Quan Marshall. 42 yards rushing and two touchdowns. It's Grant. More like it, huh? Yeah. yeah, for him it is, you bet. Grant Loy in the ball game now at quarterback. Redshirt sophomore, New Washington, Ohio, who was three for four last week for 63 yards and threw a 40 yarder in the end zone on the last play of the game. And he'll hand to Ravion Hargrove, who Scratches out about five on the first down play. And there's a look at Loy, who appears today for the 11th time in his career. Academic all back selection. Another good looking prospect, 6'5, 230 at the QB slot. You see big Dorian Hendricks in motion. At out of the H back, number 47 out there. You know, one thing that stands out to me when you look at the, the kind of kids, you've always had the tough Ohio kids, obviously, so many good high school programs and, and great high school football players that come out of the Buckeye State. Yeah. But it's you get a mix of some speed in Texas and, and some blue collar toughness in Texas. And when you look at the connections, the pipelines that they've kind of built, it's a similar, the West Texas kid, the Daigie type of kid is a lot like these Ohio kids. Third and short, Daigie to throw and Wayne Prather another catch. And Jordan Wayne Prather will have a first down. He's knocked out of bounds by Jalen King. So a fresh set of downs for Mike Jenks and the Falcons here. 17 yard throw for Malloy. Rather's had a nice day as we approach seven minutes to play. So Rather will be the, the lead dog when those receivers graduate next year. There's Hargrove and that time Brandon Adams, 325 pounds, takes the play on Ravion Hargrove. He'll come out. Bryson Denley will go back in for Bowling Green. Don't forget Rice and Wake Forest and Winston Salem coming up. 3:30 start with Evan Leppler, Takeo Spikes, and Lindsey Rowley here on your Regional Sports Network. This is Denley. Oh man. Big collision at midfield. He bounced off of that. And that was Caleb Oliver. Well, Denley went to high school at Steele High School, where Jinx was the head coach for many years. You see him put his foot in the ground, and that that's not something you can coach. It was mentioned earlier, ran a 10-4-7, was third in the state of Texas back in high school. Right. One of the top 25 backs in the country. And he had originally committed to Texas Tech, but he injured his knee his senior year. Here's Loy. Wayne Prather the catch. That'll be a first down. Tackled out of bounds at the 41-yard line. Sixth catch of the day for Jordan Wayne Prather. Just to clear it up with, with Denley, I, I think he was Tech had offered him. A lot of other schools backed out when he got hurt. Right. Ended up. Sticking with his, with his commitment to Tech and follow Jinx and a few of the other Texas Tech Lubbock connections up to Bowling Green. Yep. Very speedy guy, though. Good to see him healthy. Power look. They're going to hand it to Denley, and he'll get a couple. They've gone to this look, and it's an interesting look. And you see big 47 out there in the brown, and that's, that is Dorian Hendricks. And as you see, Denley have to come out, lost his hat. Dorian Hendricks is out there. He and Brian Sanders are converted defensive guys. Hendricks had 
four tackles last year, 11 tackles, two for loss, and he's got the cowboy collar on. That's a Batesy favorite. <laughs> and then Brian Sanders is a 261-pound guy. They moved from the defensive line. He had seven starts last year, but they brought him in for these power sets. James, like we're getting here. Mm -hmm. See Hendricks lined up on that wing to the left as Rico Fry has come in for the second down play and delay a game on Loy. Offense, five-yard penalty. First down. So there's a penalty against the Falcons, and Mike Jinks' group will have second and long. And we're keeping you updated with week five here in the ACC. Conference games are plenty. Clemson to within two now of Syracuse with under nine to go. That one looks like it's headed to the wire at Frank Howard Field at Memorial Stadium today. Trevor Lawrence knocked out of the game early. Chase Bryce is the quarterback for the Tigers. That ball is overthrown Wayne Prather. Closest guy was a Johnny Kerr, or I believe it was Kerr who was there, deep in the secondary. So now third and long. Might have been Wanye Thomas, actually, who was back there defensively for Georgia Tech. Big Woody being able to get some guys in here today that he knows he's going to need reps from as the season wears on, too, with the score where it is. Here's Loy. He wants to keep it. And he'll be tripped up inside the 40 and 38. So a pickup of about seven on the play. And on fourth down, Bowling Green will keep the offense on the field. And a doubleheader starts at 3.30. Keep that lid on. It's, it's now steam time. Steam for 30 minutes. Easy, easy. Now it's starting to hear from the Rice alums. In, in, in your, in the alums are starting hey, to call my, in. My brother played the Rice for a I, I'm just saying the alums are starting to wonder about your plan of attack today for the Deacons. <laughs> Here's Loy. Quick throw in and out of the hands of Saul Miller, who had a catch in the first half. And Georgia Tech will get it back on down. We can <laughs> So they know how to have fun. They're not having that much fun right now, guys, unfortunately. Oh, wait, hold on. I see James Bates, the next wave coming now, don't you? Man. Huh? Wow, that wait. looked fun. Hey, Rebecca, Bates, you should have seen the glisten that Bates just got in his eye up here. I Holy heard, smokes. I heard her talking about it on the phone call earlier this week, <laughs> and I was just picturing the little yellow slip and slide. Tobias Oliver is gone. 62 yards. And the Jackets go over the 60 mark. Tobias Oliver goes 62 yards into the end zone. And Tobias Oliver filling in for Taquan Marshall and doing a pretty good job. It's off to the races again. I don't think he's been touched yet. And it's 62, I love my mama very much, to 17. <laughs> oh, jeez. I knew it. I knew 62. we were going to get to 62. <laughs> that was for Dave, our producer. Yeah, well, a lot of stuff is, as I recall. Here's the, here's the point after from Wells. That'll make it 63 to 17. And this will be the most points the Jackets have scored since they hung 65 on Tulane, James. We were here for that day in your bingo accomplishment, as I recall. Uh, Marley's son was playing linebacker, right, as I recall. Yeah. That's, just, that's just track practice is all that is. I mean, there's nobody even got a whiff of all of them. Yep. See, see, he's brushing off his chest, but he didn't need to. He didn't have any, any grass on him. See, that's... That's the kind of, of juice that you need on your sidelines as you go into the thick of this schedule that we just showed earlier. I mean, and it's not just one side. It's not just like, hey, offense looked better now if we get that defense to come around. Everybody got involved, and a lot of the younger guys got involved too, which is huge. You know, it's because there are going to be some tight games here coming up. Some of these guys, third stringers, aren't going to see a lot of action, so it'll be special teams, but to get a taste of it all. 367 now. On the ground. On the ground. Yeah, and then throw the rushing on top of throw the passing on top of it. Because mm. Mike Jinks was worried about stopping the air raid. Well, he might have solved that problem, but not this one. End over end kick. Hargrove going to signal for the fair catch. And Falcons will scrimmage from the 25. A fair catch was made inside the 25-yard so, line. 338 to play. And 
Wow. Eight rushing scores today, topping the six they had against Tennessee last year to open the season on Labor Day night at Mercedes-Benz Stadium down the street. Well, and you know, it's funny because one of the things I, I asked Paul Johnson about yesterday was the way Taquan Marshall played in that game in his first start. It, it sure seemed like the, the sky was the limit right. with his talent, and that, and that continues to be the same, but he, he wasn't the same guy here at times this season. It was almost like, like he was thinking too much. He wasn't just out there playing and, and enjoying it. And it seems like he and the rest of the Yellow Jackets are certainly back to that type of field playing football right now on this Saturday anyway. Here's Charles Labar at the running back spot for Bowling Green now. And Labar is a redshirt junior, Lake Mary, Florida, down in the Orlando area. And that is, saw Tariq Carpenter coming off the field there for Georgia Tech. They can't have that. Nope. They need Carpenter to stay in there. Malik Rivera was banged up earlier, but he's back in there. Georgia Tech's got some red shirt guys in the secondary, and here's Lamar. He'll get to the 30 31. Lamar carries the football. Devin Accolade Smith is in the ball Carson. game, redshirt freshman from Ackworth. He's out there in the secondary. Avery Sherwell, who had the kick Third return, down, he's four. also in the secondary now, playing in one of the safety spots. Don't forget Rice and Wake Forest coming up. Bottom of the hour from BBT in Winston Salem with. Evan, Takio, and Lindsey. We'll give you one linebacker to another, won't we? Yeah, that's where Takio and I spent a Halloween weekend a couple years yes, ago. Yes, you did. Dressed up as Pulp Fiction. Very memorable Halloween, as I recall. <laughs> Here's Lamar trying to get outside, and he gets wrestled to the ground shy of the first down. And Mike Jenks with 210 to go can going to go for this, I think he is. Trey Jackson was involved in that tackle for Georgia Tech, the redshirt senior linebacker. And here comes Grant Timmerman, Timmerman to punt it. And Brad Stewart will drop back for the Jackets. Tech fans are chanting, block that kick. <laughs> they want 70. Well, that hasn't happened in about five years. Wobbly kick, Stewart. Oh, he, that's a fair catch. He, he, if he just raises his hand like that, it, it, it blows the play dead. Yeah. The ball will be a, just shy of the 30. Been a day on the ground, James. Well, I'll say. What was it, 367? Yeah. Well, and this is just in the second half here, all these highlights. It may take a couple hours to show you all the highlight action from this game. Oliver getting involved, of course. Not a whole lot of second half action for Taquan Marshall. A little bit of defense as well getting into the end zone. Santa Moore off the deflection. And here's the keeper. And Oliver hands to Macrina. Joseph Macrina is from Suwannee. 236-pound redshirt sophomore. Just kind of bangs away in the final 75 seconds. Well. Paul Johnson, I think, will be pleased, James, but there'll be a little more work to do before he gets to Cardinal Stadium next Friday night to see a Louisville team that they're in a little bit of a transition to a big ball game with Florida State coming up at the bottom of the hour today. Well, that, you know, maybe for different reasons. You talk about Virginia Tech and Duke, but all eyes on that one to see what the heck's going to happen. Yeah. It's, it wasn't too long ago, and that was the gossip, and not just the gossip in the ACC, but the gossip in the country when Louisville and Florida State got together. Macrina, we're in the final 40 seconds now. And Georgia Tech will have to run one more play. And that'll do it here in Atlanta. So the Jackets will go to two and three and put the emphasis right on Friday night. We said this yesterday in our visit with the coach about you're a couple wins away from being able to kind of shed some of that, you know, three-game losing skid, but you had to win today and then certainly back it up, validate it next Friday night. And then you'd come back to get Duke in the Coastal Division. Along the way, you pick up a league win. Right. And it's it's the kind of part of the year, James, where teams kind of got to reset a little bit after three or well, four. Well, and, and how is this for a reset? I mean, this, you, you can't ask for more if you're a Georgia Tech fan when it comes to resetting after the, the struggles. And, you know, and everybody expected them to struggle against Clemson. But the other two kind of 
messed with them a little bit, but hopefully got out of that funk. 63-17 the final. Georgia Tech gets a second win on the season against Bowling Green. Don't forget Rice and Wake Forest coming up at 3.30. And we will come back to Atlanta for a final word on a big day for the Jackets right after this.